Right, let's talk about mainsails, jibs, areas, the horrible looking, super unusual batwing sails. Just, you know, why the hell is this going on in terms of sail selection in the America's Cup? What does it mean for the balance of the boats? What does it mean for their speed? Um, I've got Rob Gunn with me. I'm back after a few days hiatus, Tom Partington to give us a low down on um, sail areas and sail selection for the racing. So um, first up, Rob, can you just tell us the names of the sails? I'm not even convinced the teams all have the same terminology for their sails, but conventionally you would have had a one two, on a normal yacht you would have a one two and a three so a j1 is the sail you use in the lightest wind and a j5 or six would be the jib you use in the strongest wind and it's just a, a scale as you go through um the way that you can tell the difference between them when you're looking at the boats is effectively by the the um the head point Be because the boats have got a really fixed foot length the only way you can really adjust area is through height. So the, the J1s are right up near the force data mast intersection. And then as they go to a, a one or a one and a half or a two, and Luna Ross's two might be effectively the same sail as Ineos's one and a half, um, yeah. or at least cover the same wind range. But the, the way to tell is really based on the on the height of the head and it's quite easy to see on these boats because you've got a really nice reference which is the mid camber trim stripe on the main uh, so, so you can just compare the head position to that and it gives you a good idea about about what sail it is so jibs smaller jibs <laughs> bigger numbers yeah and effectively as 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 the as the teams are going from their one to the two to the three they're reducing ll and generally while they're doing that they're all you, you'll see the heads getting bigger and bigger um and the the head's quite important because that additional roach really changes how the jib's going to twist but then below that size but below the ll of 18 you won't see the heads getting any bigger they're they're not allowed to under the rule and actually as you as they get shorter and shorter you don't want too much on the head because it'll no. make the jib twist it'll start twisting too much as it loads through the gusts yeah well i mean that's that's a feature of jibs which are shorter and squatter especially when your sheeting angle is so restricted that it becomes increasingly hard to get the leech tension on those jibs anyway regardless if you've got a load of material um, outside of the kind of triangle to try and control as well. The only way you're actually actively allowed to trim the jib is through a sheet attached to the yeah. clue. It's mm -hmm. it's quite restricted in the rule. Um, and like you say, that the jibs have all, they've got a maximum LP. So LP is the luff perpendicular. So if you took a, a line perpendicular to the luff of the jib, it's kind of in the name, and you ran that through to the clue of the sail, that dimensions not allowed to be greater than 7.05 meters so that's a fairly standard the, um jib measurement technique is yeah across many classes if you want a deeper jib you'll be maxing out your lp and if and you have a, a slightly shorter distance between the four state and the turning point mm -hmm. where that the sheet's running through and then effectively the sail will be a bit deeper and they'll yeah. be shaping the seams etc mm -hmm. to help that if we're going to talk into the the trade-offs of the jibs, I think it's good to talk a little bit about the mainsails and the variation size there because, I mean, we're into like the interplay between the, the power in each, aren't we then? So uh, the mainsail has um, an equally confusing rule and possibly deliberately badly written so that people can <laughs> exploit loopholes in it. And that's ta it takes basically five girth measurements of the sail and the mast height is fixed so there's kind of like a number in that equation which assumes it's basically assuming your mast height mm -hmm. and then it multiplies all the girths by that and the rule also says that basically if you've got hollows in it then those hollows don't count in the measurement rule and this is to stop people kind of like having big hollows in their sails which hit the measurement girths and then they get extra sail area kind of outside 
of, of the hollows where the measurement, a lot of classes have these rules and it's just to stop people creating these horrible bat wing sails, which are bigger than the maximum, bigger than what the intended maximum allowance is. However, in America's Cup, what we see is they've got too much sail area a lot of the time. And this rule actually just leaves the barn door open for people to drive a tractor right through. And that's to <laughs> use these leech hollows to hit the minimum size, but still have a, a reduced area. So that's kind of what the rule is on the main sails. From a visual point of view, I think what I find easiest to see on the main sails for the sizing of them is I always look at the logo at the top. So they've got these event sponsor logos. And if you're trying to work out if you've got a big main on or a small main, look at the logo, look how much sail area there is at the back edge of that logo. And that'll roughly tell you how big of a main sail they've got on. And if you go really small, then they start chopping chunks out the logo. Like you say, the rule basically takes the girths and then it does some, I think it's Simpsons formula or something, it, uh, and then calculates an area based on those. So you've got a maximum area of 145 square meters and you've got a minimum area of 135 square meters. But if people feel that they're overpowered with 135 square meters, they're, they're doing these bat wing sales to reduce that but still measure, they're still measuring as 135 square meters. Although yeah. in reality, they've, they've reduced the area at the top quite significantly. Okay, let's dive into this sail area rule just a little bit more because it's another interesting loophole which Emirates Team New Zealand have found in this rule. So you'll know from my previous video that Emirates Team New Zealand has a greater mast height by the fact that they've extended their mast below the mast ball. This gives them a greater luff length and a luff length which is longer but longer down low. And some people commented, well, that's good, but it doesn't mean they can carry more area. It just means when it's windy, they can increase their writing moment. But it actually means they can carry more sail area as well. I'll explain. So this equation here is what's called a Simpson's rule um, equation. And it's pretty simple actually, um, don't get put off by it. You've got five girths on the sail and what you might do normally if it was a rectangle was multiply the girth by the height to give you the area. But a sail has a curve, the leech is curved. So they use this equation to calculate the area underneath the curve but it's still not that complicated. So you'll see there's these five Gs and they correspond to the five girths and they're given a weighting for the multiplication and then they're times by this 26.5. And you'd think that 26.5 corresponds to the luff length or the mast height. And it's the same number as the upper as the mast height. So People looking at this rule would think, yeah, that's my sail area, 135 to 145 meters squared. However, you'll notice the rule doesn't mention meter squared at all. And this 26.5 meters, whilst it corresponds to the, uh, the mast height, if your mast is longer than that, by virtue of it extending below the uh, mast ball, then effectively you get that area for free. So those 18 inches, that those square meters of sail area down low aren't really counted in this calculation of area because the luff length is just assumed to be 26.5, even though for Emirates Team New Zealand, we know it's greater than that. So this isn't really a calculation for area at all. There's no meter squared here. This 26.5 um, uh, divided by 12 is kind of a random multiplier really for this whole kind of girth addition and multiplication. Um, it's just kind of a trick to the other teams to see if they twig that there's actually no calculation of sail area at all. And if you can make your mass longer and your luff length longer, then that sail area is free. And what this means is, yes, Emirates Team New Zealand have got lower sail area, more writing moment, but in the light winds, they've just got plain up and simple, more sail area available to them than the other teams do. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, some really interesting stuff in there. First of all, the loophole, which pretty much allows unlimited sail area. 
as long as you add it in mass tight, which is exactly what Emirates Team New Zealand has done. So it's the perfect loophole to accompany the uh, mass tight loophole as well, which is quite interesting. And then you have the loophole for the bat wings as well, which it's a rule written to stop you creating extra sail area with a kind of bat wing sail. But it does the inverse as well at the lower range that it allows you to create really small main sails um, with these huge scallops cut out of the leech. Um, and I'm also hoping that that video was a pretty good sum up of the visual differences that you can pick up whilst watching from your home. So how to see the difference between the jib sizes, looking at the head height and how to see the difference in the main sail sizes, looking at that America's Cup logo and the amount of sail material um, after that. So yeah, hopefully that's been interesting. Going to put out another episode tomorrow where we look at the the kind of balance characteristics of the cell plan choices and look at how the back wing main can really give you a lot of options on how you change your center of effort fore and aft in the boat so that's quite interesting as well so i'll catch you again tomorrow and um yeah take care